uh, Tom Nunnermaker with Jim Riggio and Rick Rose. Uh, before we get started, a quick disclaimer, the Capital Discussions is not a broker-dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulator trades are believed to be accurately represented, however, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. And just a reminder, this is for educational purposes only. So with that, Rick, um, pleasure to have you on the round table. It's the first time you've been here, but you're a, a longtime trading group leader with Capital Discussions with the California Trading Group One. And uh, basically what you do is uh, uh, crude oil futures options. So we're all looking forward to uh, your experience and thoughts on the crude market and how you trade it. So welcome. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, mostly I don't know what really to ask, tell people about it other than that it is a little different animal in the last three months wise than it has been in the past be just because the boys have been raking the IV all around. Uh, it is basically, you can see on this, if I could share my screen, am I sharing yep. my screen? Okay. Not yet. I, you know, quick start, I guess. It also helps to find the record button, too. Oh, I already got the recording going. Okay, you got the recording going. Okay. So you should be seeing the screen, and if I get it. Yep. Let me we get see it. Chat window in case somebody types something. <clears throat> As this line here indicates, this is, in effect, a reflection of what volatility is is today in relation to what it was a year ago. So as yesterday-wise, it was up at 100%. So that means basically at 60%. A year ago, it was at 30, and we're now at 60-plus, pushing 70. So that's the biggest thing is because where we used to be able to get in and out in four to ten days-wise with the changes in volatility is keeping, you, keeping me in longer anyway or has kept me in longer before time decay really starts to show itself. But that's that. Uh, my pretty much the one I've liked the most that doesn't give me the maximum profit is an unbalanced butterfly, <clears throat> which normally are one, one, four, three lots in that aspect. Uh, to get the chart back here again, I need to change this back to the current month since this is what we're working on. And it has a little blip up here, which as it goes down, raises the, the lost side up here. I am currently waiting for it to go back up again so that I can either sell a 39 39 butterfly or a 41 butterfly, which will fill in the top side. Uh, I got into this one a little bit early because of the down the downswing. I only got three dollars for it, but if, if I had waited till yesterday, I could have gotten four. And I'd much rather have four than three, but I'm stuck with three. So the upside wise, if I can get it to go up to around 36 wise, I should be able to get. 315 for a 41, and I'll be able to get the, if I do the 39, uh, I get probably better than $4 for it. And what I'm looking at is based on the probability at expiration of where this guy's going to be. Um, at touching, and oh, let's do out of the money. So out of the money wise, it should be around 41 and 20. The bottom size says 25.71. I'm not sure if the oil market makers are in the mood to go that low yet. Hey, Rick, do you think you could talk a little bit about the CL contract, like when it trades, how much the minimum tick is, how much a point is worth, um, you know, that kind of stuff for people who aren't familiar with it? 
Uh, just, I got a question here from Andrew. Let's see if I can. Basically, that the chart I was showing us is a day to day basis. So, one year ago, IV was at 30, and today it's at 60 in that in rough rough figure so that it's not not on a monthly deal it's just on a day-to-day -day volume change volatility change not a volume change why is that uh, rick has there been a little bit of volatility in oil uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh it, i won't a, a I, I subscribe to a, a few of the conspiracy theorists in the marketplace, and uh, there's a couple of people who call it Fraud Street, but we we know there's no fraud or any of that type of stuff goes on, you know, market manipulation and that type of stuff. Uh, just like today, you know, la last week oil inventory rose 8 million barrels, and we were in an oil glut, and the price went up. And today we got another 7.8 million barrels, and it went down 50 cents, and now it's gone back up two bucks. So, <laughs> it, so it I, not... I personally think, right? I personally think um, oil was um, about 93 dollars when uh, Stephen Channon bought a Tesla, and I bought a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> so you can blame us. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Uh, there are no weeklies in the CNL at this time. It's uh, straight monthly. Uh, Phil is very easy. Uh, I I bid out for it. I get what I want as opposed to taking what they get. The only time I, if I want to get out of something, if I'm going to leg out of something, then I'll take mid price and exit that way, and I. Usually, I'm filled within uh, three seconds because they like they like getting rid of us little small people that take care of you know stop their impair their manipulation so they get by us out quick and move on to their bigger things. But you say looking at uh, the chart and. Say a five minute here. We had looking at the difference in the size of bars here at right after it took us a, a good drop initially down here, then it started coming back up, and then with then the big boys started coming in, and we get you know they bought for basically. Almost 30 minutes, and then we've gotten we're getting back down into the place, kind of hide hide me type trading stuff. But here they were announcing that they were really buying stuff and expecting yeah you know, they're expecting it to go higher, or they're going to try to push it higher on us. Hey Rick, what uh, if somebody wanted to trade oil? What kinds of reports or events or things should they be monitoring? The biggest one is the um, the weekly oil inventory. You know, that's the one that should be uh, the most important, whether we're going up or you know the supply is going up or down, especially in West Texas. But you know, I say right now it's running the inverse of what it, what you would think. I say we, we're supposedly in a glut, and the more we add to the glut, the higher the price wants to go. So either they're doing a good job as they've built some more tankers and they're filling up the tankers and they're shipping them out to sea so that they don't have to pay any taxes on them, uh, on the storage of it, and that they can bring it in when they need it, or whatever you know. There's a website that I believe is called oilprice.com uh, that gives has a lot of reading material and they have a subscription that they tell you that they can give you insider information on what oil is going to be doing or what is what is happening within the oil regime. 
I am personally, I'm just basically following what what these guys tell me. These guys are doing. They're coming in here and buying. So they're it's the overall look at on a daily basis or a weekly time period wise. You're looking at oil being higher. So at what level they're going to take it up to? I imagine uh, we'll probably see 36 again. Shouldn't shouldn't be much of a problem considering that's where the monthly pivot is is 35 so we can get up into that bracket then I can sell sell the call side or do a call side butterfly you're looking I like oil in the aspect that for if I make a penny on an oil contract so if I just went out and bought the oil futures contract itself and I bought it for $35, and I sold it for $35 and a penny. After commissions, I still make money, which I can't say that I did when I was trading options because you're looking at a fixed fee, usually, you know, anything from 2 to 350 a contract. So you, that dollar amount is in and out. So if you got say 350 a contract a penny will net you $10 and it costs you 350 in 350 out so so you got $7 worth of expenses and you made $10 on the on the trade because of the penny move you're 3 bucks a hit it's not much but uh it still beats buying 10 contracts of a stock and paying $9 and then selling for a penny and you make a hundred dollars, no, ten dollars, and it costs you nine dollars to get out again. So you're you're still in the you're in the hole that much money to get in and out of ten contracts, which would be Great. the same as one contract of oil. Do you trade the futures by themselves or a combination with the options? I primarily trade them in as a combination of the, the options. Um, Ideally, I just go after time decay. I, I'm basically uh, lazy. I like I like just sitting back and watching the money come in. I think it's 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 fun to watch it do that. But if I do the um, actual futures contract, and if I see a good signal that it's going to go up, then I'll you know buy it, buy it or sell it. And then hang on to it, you know, pretty much for a day, and then out and take what I get. So that that does supplement the income that you get off of the um, time decay. But I say with time decay wise, I usually I'll bring in uh, the initial will be about twelve thousand dollars, and I'm happy to be out at half of that. So as soon as I can get both sides in the center and get half half of what I brought in out of it I'll be I'll take that and leave so I you know five figure five to six thousand dollars a month is good income for me for doing two to three weeks worth of work and the margin for that what about 20 uh the margin will be 24 initially yeah if you wanted to do three times three 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 lots worth on both sides. You're looking at uh, about thirty thousand, but the three lot wise, you're going to be playing up in the twenty. You're looking to get eight to nine thousand dollars. And did you see uh, Curtis's question that he couldn't really see the butterfly structure? Can you uh, maybe go to the analyze chart and have a good look at that? Uh, profile the butterfly structure. So if I put put what I'd like to get in this is basically your butter your flat across here which would be you know like that's 13 12,000 and you're risking 21 and this is a two lot situation so I'm I'm getting basically 50 percent of my income on what I risk which is much better than what the you know, a stock option is. 
So if it get when it gets up here to six, then I'd be out. So I get basically I make twenty five percent of my risk, twenty five to thirty percent of risk a month. And uh, so this is you have in this thing you can do a strat, strat straddle, which will give you the maximum dollars but the highest risk then you can do an iron condor which is reduces your risk which means lowers your margin uh, and then you got the iron, unbalanced butterfly which I've got here and the major difference between the iron butterfly uh, the iron condor and this one is that with the next strike up by it takes and flattens this this line out brings it up instead of having a slope a steeper slope down here it brings it up here a little longer so that when you get closer to this you're not you're not down as much so like um, yesterday when I got down into this bracket <clears throat> on the single side it got down to 32 so it is down like sixteen hundred dollars had I not had this little kicker upper here it would have been about another thousand dollars more down so it would have been about like the difference between twenty six hundred dollars down and sixteen hundred dollars down um, the easiest way to do that is to make one up here See if I'm that wrong one. I guess what I mean is strangle instead of straddle. So I'll do this one. And they call it 29, so put it 41. So these are $1,000 a full point, so uh, say a dollar credit would be $1,000. Uh, right, this would be seven, well, almost eighteen hundred dollars, and for one, it's twenty two hundred or twenty two thousand. So if you did ten, that's a little steep for my blood, but so I I would probably go five. Turn that off. J6. So for fourteen nine, your it'll cost you thirty eight. Margin is 38, uh, 39 for 14, so you're still almost close to 30, you're about 30, around 40% income of what you're risking. Eric, do you think you could walk through uh, the trade like from the beginning to show how you start putting it on and um, so people can see how you build it? Uh, 
say I've started using this probability. This is when kind of what I'm doing is going back to my where I started initially when I first started trading oil. I used this probability uh, curve that Thinkorswim has, and I used to pick start with a two standard deviation, and I sh did the the strangle. And that worked well for the first four months of my trading it. So, I, you know, I made profit. I was primarily looking to make $500 because at the time I started this is when oil gas was like four and a quarter a gallon. I figured that if they're going to screw me at the gas pump, I'm going to try to let them pay for my gas bill. So I was shooting for $500, but I ended up making 5000 So it kind of got me excited. So the first four months I did a, a strangle and you know, was making basically five to six thousand dollars a month. The third the fifth month came in, oil was at a hundred and five and I had a had it out there. I bought the eighty five I sold the eighty five puts and the 115 calls, I believe. And then about the second day I had it, oil went from 105 down to 102. My 85 put went from 68 cents to $1.36. And at that time I was holding it I didn't make any adjustments at all until it got down to down to the short side, which I is where I ended up exiting it, and so that cost me like twenty cost me the pretty much almost all of the first four months that I uh, had made money at, and oil proceeded to you know, I had to make a decision at that particular point whether I was going to did I really want to ride this thing down as far as it would go, or what did I want to do with it? So I looked at it and estimated, you know, plotted in within think or swim the probabilities. What would price? What would my losses be if if it continued down? So I took it down to about seventy. If it well price dropped down to seventy dollars. It was going to be like I was about eighty-eight thousand dollars in the hole, which I didn't have and I didn't want to risk. So I ended up closing, basically closing out the the contract at at the when it hit eighty-five dollars, and it did get down to seventy-nine. So I would have been down like almost you know a hundred thousand dollars. But then at that point it decided to go back up and by expiration day, which is what I was holding it to as expiration, it, it closed at eighty seven dollars. So instead of taking the instead of having a twenty thousand dollar loss, I could have had money in the bank. those days, you know. I'm I am an excellent uh, left sided trader. It's my right side that I have problems with still. I'm trying to learn how to get better at it, but I'm still working at it. So getting back to what I start out with is I look at this, get an idea where what math projects oil is going to be based on, you know, time, time, volatility, and other unknown factors that I am watching with because I'm using what's projected for me here. And based on that, I'll pick my... Uh, Point my short points. So in this case here, I picked 41. I don't really think it's going to get up that high because of where we're at, and oil does not move up uh, really that fast. Uh, the downside does move accelerate quite uh, considerably faster than the upside does. So you can get into trouble on. At least I have gotten myself into trouble on these down down swings, just because it does move fast. And then they 
really jump in and add to the volatility of it. So technically, when I first started this thing about uh, four or five years ago, I'd have picked 41 and, and 20, 25 as my strangle shorts and taken what I taken what I got for income and just sat and wait. But I also started this uh, 28 days out right af pretty much right after expiration of the previous month's contract. So there's 28 days left till the next expiration. That's one of the halfway consistent things about uh, oil is that their expiration is always 28 days between expirations. So instead of always expiring, expiring on the third Friday of the month, they expire between Tuesday and Friday of the third week of the month. So that, in that aspect there, it makes it a little nicer because that last week is the the iffy one, uh, and if it's a short week, it's even it takes a lot of the iffiness out of it. It makes it a little quicker because I have held uh, MasterCard through expiration and in the last day for turning it from uh, having it go from a profit to a, to a loss. But I say most of the time within oil, if you sit and roll, you can do a, a um, back ratio roll down and just keep getting yourself. If you've got enough money in it, you can keep, if you can keep rolling it down to the spot it hits expiration and you're still out of the money, you're going to, you can still make money, but you're going to be rolling almost uh, two for one. So if you have one, you're going to buy two. And if you roll it again, you're going to have two, and that's going to become four. And at four, the four is going to become eight. And if you start out at 10, you're going to have 20. 20 goes to 40. 40 goes to 80. So you, you can um, end up being... Getting getting into a large large margin requirements real quick in that aspect. So if you did starting out with a strangle again at uh, using the twenty five, And the call side to be up to 41. George, what's the margin for a shorted uh, naked strangle? Say again? Uh, what's the margin for uh, one short strangle? Uh, one short strangle, you're looking at, at 41.25, you're looking at 20,500. Okay. And that, that's a bloated margin because if you look, go in there and the actual margin is, at least what they're showing that they're basing the margin on is usually going to be about ten to 12000 after you get into it. So if you take a picture of this, So we're looking at about, you're making about seven, if you held this to expiration wise, you're looking at making about $7,000 on 20, on 21. So you're, you're making a third of what your risk is. But this would be one that doing it this way, I'd, I'd wait until, um, I'd be waiting until about, uh, well, actually, it should already be gone here. Uh, since this is, yeah. Uh, uh, 
right now we've got 42 days to expiration, so I'd be waiting about another 14 more days. Yeah, another two weeks to look at look at this one here. And and then planning on holding it to expiration. If I was going to look at, you know, maybe getting out, ideally getting out at half, or you know, making making 15% on this one lot, um, and you know, basically getting out at half. Uh, That'd be another option to take on it, but that's primarily the way you know you just go at it and say, and if I take this same thing and Do a little different with the iron, with um, unbalanced butterflies. We're looking at a two lot, and it's thirty nine thousand. And you're looking at uh, fifteen thousand, so you're close to fifty percent. Of what your margin is, being where it's at, the IV is now, and you got from twenty, you know, tw basically twenty-eight and a half to forty-one. As long as it stays in there, you're going to, you know, get your maximum profit, and you can. The only problem comes in; it's easier to get out if it stays here in the middle. Uh, if you get down here towards one one side or the other, otherwise you're looking at probably having to stay in it a little longer to get to get time decay to come back up to your, get closer to your line to make any money at it. And. Hopefully that's not too bright, but these are trades that I did last year. Um, I didn't – this two, $290 that I made on uh, – in January, that was because I had intended to buy a futures contract on, uh, in February, ended up getting the January one. And so after twenty nine at twenty nine cents profit, I made uh, two ninety on that one. But then the rest of the months, I did my usual unbalanced butterflies. And because this one got up to the height that it is here, means that I did have to roll it. I did roll it down one side. Did roll one side to get up into that mark that type of profit. But normally. I range between you know a thousand to so six. You can't you can't. I start at forty two days to forty five days to expiration using the unbalanced butterfly. And my days in this was one day thirty eight ten. Uh, so based on that my average time in was like about 22 days. Okay, so November was 48. So that says I went to expiration on that one. So 
So I say it's basically it's like anything. You just kind of pick you pick an area that you think the oil is going to stay in, and hopefully you get the range right. Uh, the only if you find in my back testing, I found the only time I lost money is when I got into trends like this, and I said I wasn't going to trade them, but I still ended up trading them, and I did did what I figured I would do on these days, lost money. And I didn't cut didn't cut my losses short like I should have, but all the way through here, these these are the nice these two trading periods here are the great the nicest ones in the you know, basically you put it out there, you leave it and kinda of walk away you can walk away and forget it. And then when you get down and uh these guys you have to work a little you're gonna have to plan on working more. This one, this one here is another put on and forget. This one you had to work, put on and forget. And this one was another hard working one. This is an end of the year one that I ended up losing in December, but what I made, made back most of it in basically just option trading because that's what I ended up with was futures contracts. And, and had to roll them out to the next month at January's trading, and then I closed them all out. It took took what I got, what I could get, at December 31st, and reduce reduce my loss on this on this particular side. But if you get your trading plan, you stick to it. When you see a nice downtrend on the 20 moving average, uh, you got two options. The, one of the best ones, you can sell a close, almost at the money, unbalanced butterfly, or sell just sell a short call contract and let it go away from you. Stay out, you know, don't put your puts on. Uh, these market type conditions, when you're putting on a trade on this month, you have that you have that line already there. It's not it's not new. It's been there a month. Uh, the only thing you could be hoping for is that it ends up being like this. But well, as long as this, I use the eight moving average. <coughs> And then this thing is basically just bouncing off, you know, starts at the 8 and goes down, starts at the 8 and goes down, comes back to the 8, and then goes back down again. Uh, these are things that should be registering in your mind that weren't registering in my mind at that on that particular day. I, I overlooked them. They were... The signal was there, not to, not to put on the put side. Um, this, when you get like this, uh, it's the put side, especially here. You're looking at the put side is good, be, looks to be good, a good bet in the aspect that now it's above the 20, so we're looking for the thing to, in effect, go up. And, but it went down first, and it looks like it's going to go up. It wants to go up. But tomorrow will be another day that will say, is this green, today's green bar, is that going to be ignored, or is it going to be have some follow-through to go on the upside? If it does, then um, you got two choices. Since I've got the put on, I need to really consider, if it wants to go down tomorrow, getting out of the put because it means it's going to go probably below the 28 and a half that I've got set up for it. Or I need to, you know, basically close close the trade and reposition it someplace else and minimize my loss. Uh, 
uh, if you want to use USO, you need basically uh, 2.68 times the USO to pretty much get the equivalent to one contract of oil. Uh, option view, I believe, does do futures, so you could back test. You could back, just back text, back test the future with option view. You don't have to use one of the ETFs. If you got, uh, if you use one of the the other back test one one, then you'd since they don't support futures, you'd have to use USO as a back test. But USO does mimic oil. Just that there's about a 2.68 times difference in price. You see Dirk's question about uh, Katango? Yeah, yeah Katango, if, if it's a buck 60, to, yeah, it's but. Uh, when I started this, Katango was a dollar seventy-two uh, for this month, as opposed, or, yeah, to for March and February. So today, today it's down to buck fifty-seven. So right now, uh, normally. Um, in an uptrending or project, I think of, I'm going to put words in my mouth here. And I think when the market makers feel the oil is going to go up, they go into contango because uh, pretty much most of last year we were in backwardation, and the year before that also. But yeah, I guess kind of when it's a new, a neutral or upward motion, expect that they. They do contango, and uh, if it's looking for a downward situation, then they do the backwardation. Yes, that's why you have to multiply. If you're going to do a hundred, a thousand USOs, you really need twenty, two thousand six hundred and eighty to do one future contract. And when you do that, you also remember that your your expenses your expenses are higher with USO than what they would be with CL. The nice thing on the the other nice thing on CL wise is that if you work with the whole the whole future contract, uh, you're only done. Uh, about a $4,600 margin per contract. So if you, and you don't really, you never see that really until if, it, especially if you just day trade it, you'll never see it. If you hold it overnight, it's the only time that they uh, check your your margin on that part. As opposed, you know, and it they don't deduct any monies from your account also on that. So the only time you really get, uh, you have to pay for something is the, the difference when you sell it or if you sell it when you buy it. So if you go out here and you sell a 35, 35 contract and then you buy it back at 33, you make your two thousand dollars profit, and you get to keep the two thousand dollars. the The initial buy or the initial sell doesn't go in. Basically, doesn't go into your account, nor does the final sell go into your account. Just the resulting difference between the two. So, if you, in effect, again, going the opposite way, if you bought at 32 and you held it for 
four days and it got up to 39. The margin would be deducted on a day-to-day -day basis because they do a mark-to-market every day on you. But your net result when you sold it at 39 would be the seven the seven thousand dollars would be what would end up in your account, and none of the well, what uh, four hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars that would be the basic a thousand times whatever you pay whatever you bought bought or sold the contract for, like you would with stock in USO. So there's some advantages to dealing with the actual future than as opposed to the substitute. So that is about all I can think of, unless there's some more questions. I don't see any more questions. Um, thanks everyone for participating. Um, any last words of advice for anybody who wants to start trying uh, the trading oil, um, hours, fills, execution tips, anything like that? Like what is the uh, best time? My uh, experience wise, ideally, uh, you don't, you stay out of the amateur hour, so you wait until uh, primarily at 10 o'clock after to exit trades, uh, 10.30 might even be better. Um, selling in the first half hour usually produces a little more income. But if you're going to buy, you know, you're going to close out something, uh, the market makers take advantage of amateur hour. Uh, what was the other qu part of your question, Tom? Oh, just any tips on, um, you know, we, we talked about the times, anything for execution or just any, any any little pieces of information you wish you knew when you were getting started. Uh, the, other, the other piece of information is that uh, after my initial first loss-wise, I picked up another uh, trading technique from a Jay Hansen and he was using I think they I think Dan calls it the weird door and what he did is when he gets a his short gets to be one and a half times uh, what it brought him in he'll roll he rolls it out and rolls it down basically and rolls a third of his contract down and he'll do another third at 175 and by the time it hits double he's the whole contract all the contracts that he had initially are rolled down to a different strike and uh, but as I say that that gets to be that can be detrimental too especially if you're in a steep downtrend market like uh, like I showed earlier because you're when you roll you're pretty much if you don't want to lose money at it which is the name of the game you roll you do a ratio roll of anything from uh, one one to two to one to or two for three or something whatever you can get by with most of the time it's two for two especially if you want to go down two strikes so you end up, you know, you you take if you had six to start with, you roll a third, so you roll two, at, and you end up with four down two strikes at 175. You take another two, roll down four to the same previous strike, two down, and when it hits two, double that, then you roll that final two down, and so now you've got basically you've got 12 where you had six. And you're two strikes further down, but uh, ideally that's enough to reach a limit someplace. And then you might have to, you know, then comes a decision, that, which I'm still working on, is whether you do that, you do that the second time or you just, you bite the bullet and wait for it to hit a spot 
that it's bottomed out and then jump back in. And you can jump, you know, if you're going to jump back in, you can jump back uh, where you, where your last strike was that you took your loss on, or you can kind of do it at the money, depending on how much intestinal fortitude you have in your and confidence you have in your trading ability. Uh, I keep looking at that on the left side and doing it, but uh, right side I haven't had the intestines to do that yet. Man, I guess uh, the last thing before we go is just to remind people that you have a trading group every week. Yeah, we can discuss it. It's, I, I do mine differently, and I think what I've seen the other gentlemen do in that I don't sit down and talk about a trade, you know, doing doing the trade because pretty much wise I'm in it, and I'm in it uh, for the till I reach my target. Uh, the only thing that comes up is adjustments, and if Thursday is an adjustment day, it turns out to be an adjustment day, we can talk about the adjustment. If it's not, then the adjustments have already been done, and we're just sitting, I'm sitting waiting for time decay to come in, but uh, I'm more than happy to ask questions if people come up, you know, have them to ask and want to get some answers on it, I will try to help them out the best I can. And those meetings are Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern for your trading group. Yep. Okay, well, uh, thanks very much, Rick. Uh, a lot of good information here for uh, uh, for people interested in trading the futures options on oil. So really appreciate your sharing your thoughts. Yeah, they had one more comment that I just saw Derek wrote here. Yes, uh, yes they vary the oil market by the dollar weakness or strength. Uh, yeah, the euro is up on 200 pips today. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah, I guess on the perceived weakness of the U.S. dollar. So that's how the pair was, pairs work. One's weak, the other one's strong. Yeah. Uh, so when I looked at the euro, it was almost a one-to-one, -one, which was, I think when it started, it was like one and a half or 175 to one. Yeah, I think the most I paid for my mortgage when I converted euros over the last few years was 157. So I'm happy that it's back down in the 1.1 region now. <laughs> Big difference. So. It knocks knocks down the payment. <laughs> That's for sure. No, I was, hey, looking well, at some, I was looking at some drugs there the other day on, on uh, in, over in England, and they wanted uh, 85 euros, and I looked at, at – uh, no, eighty-five, eighty-five pounds for the for the meds, and then I looked at the dollar pound today. The dollar pounds a buck and a half, so I had another fifty percent onto that eighty-five. We're talking U.S. prices. Well, then here in Germany, we have the privilege of paying a nineteen percent tax on top of that. So, <laughs> okay. uh, I guess we. I think we're we're outrageous, but I guess we're not compared to other countries. Everybody, there's no utopia, right? Yeah, somebody. We all have to pay those guys that sit up there in their golden thrones. All and right, well, we're elected. All right, thank you, Tom. Thank you for everybody for attending. I uh, hope if anybody has uh, any questions, drop in and see me on Thursdays. Yep.